Welcome to New Money, where each week we explore the most innovative Chinese businesses and entrepreneurs. I'm Tracy Chang. Technology has brought revolutionary changes to the manufacturing sector. Automation is the trend as well as the future. Although China's robotics development is still in its infancy, the sector's prospects remain bright. This is RBD Technologies plant in Dongguan, an important industrial city located in China's Pearl River Delta. Some 700 machines are working day and night processing screens for smartphones. Tons of machines and tons of screens, but very few workers. Yang Wei, a production supervisor, has been working here for three years. When he first started as a machinery operator, things were very different. We used to be responsible for three machines per person, but everyone handles 15 now. And we've also learned how to check the products and read the design drawings. So we've got more skills now. The old machines used to process 600 screens a day. It's about 1,000 now. All these changes started two years ago. The company had 1,700 employees and an output worth some 20 million yuan per month. 40% of the workforce was machine operators processing glass. The need for a large number of workers has kept the costs up, and the company was losing money. It was also difficult to find enough people for the job. We couldn't find people to do the job because it required experience in the industry. Glass processing was not traditionally a mainstream manufacturing industry, so we face a shortage of experienced workers. Someone who has been working as a technician for over three years can be promoted to a senior technician or even an engineer at a new company. Technicians with three to four months of experience can become group leaders at a new place. So it was very difficult to find and keep people and the costs of labor were very high. Who says it was costing him five to six thousand yuan per month for a machine operator? Two, three times the costs of a person doing repetitive work in a processing market. He found the solution to his problem in automation. The tireless machines not only replaced 80% of the hard to find labor, they also increased the company's productivity. RBD Technologies' monthly output value has almost tripled to 60 million yuan now. Whose company is far from the only one facing these issues? Liu Qingtang, a section chief at Dongguan's Economy and Information Technology Bureau, tells us that the city currently suffers a labor shortage of some 100,000 people and is losing its advantage of having cheap labor, an advantage it has enjoyed for 30 years. The cost of labor has been going up and at a very quick rate in recent years. For example, Wonderful Group is a leading tile maker in Dongguan. It was headquartered in Dongguan but opened up factories in Japan a few years ago. They also invested in the U.S. last year. The relocation of these companies shows that manufacturing costs in Dongguan are very close to those in developed countries. To keep its lead in the manufacturing sector, the Dongguan government launched a project last year to replace human labor with robots. Beginning last year, it has budgeted 200 million yuan of financing per year for companies to go automatic and the aim is to have 1,000 to 1,500 replacement projects implemented by the end of 2016. By the end of this October, more than 600 companies have applied for the innovation funds, backed up by more than 5.5 billion yuan in new investment of their own. Industrial technology advancement in Dongguan grew 143 percent in the first 10 months of this year, the fastest among the nine cities of the Pearl River Delta. We expect the overall labor productivity to rise by 65 percent once 600 or so projects are completed. What's more is that the market will need 41,000 fewer people and the unit cost of labor would drop by 11 percent. Of course, it is not only in China's major industrial centers that we are seeing companies upgrading their production. Sim Technology is a leading mobile handset and wireless communication developer in Shanghai, and it's also having trouble to find workers. It started going automated three years ago. 
The labor market in the Chinese mainland, especially Generation Y labor, is unstable. We lose more than 10% of our workers every month. The robots in our automated system can work 24 hours a day, while human labor can only work for about 10.3 hours. So overall, our productivity is boosted by at least 10%. The company has automated its testing lines for mobile foam motherboards, saving at least 10 people per line per ship. And each of those 10 would have cost the company at least 5,000 yuan a month. Simtech now only has a third of the employees it had at its peak. Yao says their production process for motherboards will be fully automated early next year, from taking orders to manufacturing and quality testing. No people need it. Now, just a reminder, you can use your smartphone to scan a QR code on the bottom of your screen to find the latest and all previous episodes of New Money. Now, to begin today's discussion, Professor Teng Jingmeng joins me in the studio. He is the Associate Professor at Beijing Foreign Studies University. So thank you very much for joining me, Professor Teng. Let's talk about this. What actually brought the changes to this traditional manufacturing industry? Well, first thing first, I think, once again, it has to do with the skill sets of the workers. Now we have these new workers with more skills, better trained. <laughs> better skills, too. Right, better skills and uh, in their toolboxes. And mm -hmm. now they're actually high-tech workers to control the ro robotics. Before, in the, uh, back in the past, I mean, each worker can control only three machines. Mm. But now, according to that very factory, I mean, factory manager, I mean, they can even control 15 machines. Wow. And so more machines being operated and that... By fewer people. By fewer people. Mm. And that, in a sense, brings about the, this change to introduce this robotic technology. So it's, uh, on a sense, in, in a sense, very necessary. It is, absolutely. Professor Tung, China used to be the factory of the world. We were the absolute leaders of the manufacturing world. And now this position, our number one position, is getting incredibly, increasingly challenged every single day. So do you agree with that? I do agree. I think it's very, very incredible in the sense that uh, China is being challenged by developed nations, once again, the United States of America. I mean, that nation, once again, is revitalizing its manufacturing industry, and but with the high tech uh, high techs. Uh, these high technologies are, in a sense, playing a major role in reviving that nation's manufacturing industry. And mm. China is uh, uh, increasingly confronted with this kind of challenge. Especially since our labor costs are rising as well. Yes. Uh, in fact, our labor cost is almost like uh, the same uh, mm -hmm. as those um, de developed nations. So, Professor Tong, how should this company deal with rising labor costs? Well, first thing first, I think we need to uh, lowered the cost by replacing humans with the robots. <laughs> robots are always tireless. I mean, they can work 24 hours a day, I mean, yep. basically. Secondly, I think that uh, we need to continue to improve the industrial technology. Mm. The technology is to be improved and increasingly, I think that we need to apply those technology to the front level and especially on the assembly line. Mm. Workers and especially robots, uh, technology got to be, in a sense, mature. And thirdly, I think they can also be, in a sense, very conducive to raising the productivity mm. uh, because I think, once again, they are... Uh, so much faster, right, fa than They're human. faster, uh, more efficient, and work long hours. And that perhaps means a lot of low-skill human workers are going to be losing their jobs pretty soon. While we're taking a short break, more analysis on quality control when we return. <laughs> 